For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Peruvian Congress impeaches President Vizcarra over unproven charges of corruption, protests break out alleging a coup. Evo Morales returns to Bolivia after a year in exile. Palestinian women's rights activists sent to six months administrative detention. Armenia and Azerbaijan de-escalate conflict under Russian mediation. And Boris Johnson's bid to nullify Brexit deal voted down in the House of Lords. In our first story, after a four-hour debate, the Peruvian Congress voted on Monday night to impeach Martin Vizcarra as the president. The impeachment motion received 104 votes in favour with 19 against and 4 abstentions. Following the decision, thousands have taken to the streets to protest the hasty decision which many see as an attack on democracy. Following Monday's vote, Manuel Marino, the President of the Peruvian Congress, is set to take over the office on Tuesday. Vizcarra addressed the people of Peru an hour after the decision was announced. He said that he would not appeal against the decision. He stated that his refusal to challenge the decision was not to give the impression that he is only after power. The impeachment process was initiated following allegations of Vizcarra receiving illicit payments when he was governor of the Moncagua region between 2011 and 2014. The alleged bribe was taken in relation to pub a public works project and the construction of a regional hospital. The allegations which surfaced in mid-October were denied by Vizcarra, but the Attorney General of Peru went ahead with an investigation. His opponents in Congress called for the impeachment on the grounds that the allegations, which are yet to be proven by the way, makes him morally incapacitated to serve as president. Martin Vizcarra took office as president in March 2018 following the resignation of Pedro Pablo Kuczynski. Kuczynski was accused of using bribery to block an impeachment vote over corruption charges. Vizcarra was his vice president. In our next story, former Bolivian president Evo Morales returned to Bolivia after 11 months of exile in Argentina. Morales was welcomed back with a massive rally at the town of Villazón on the Bolivia-Argentina border. His return marks the defeat of the US-backed civic military coup in November 2019 that ousted him and forced him to flee after threats were made on his life. Thousands of members of various indigenous groups, social movements and trade unions from across the country arrived in Villazón to receive Morales and celebrate his return. Members of his party, the movement towards socialism were also present. The citizens welcomed him with traditional music and dances. An ancestral ceremony was also held to honour his return. Shortly after his arrival in the country, Morales greeted the people gathered there and thanked them for their support. In his speech, he also thanked the presidents of Argentina, Mexico, Venezuela and Cuba for their support after the coup last year. Likewise, he called for unity and stressed on the importance of continuing the struggle in the face of capitalism and imperialism. Following the rally, Morales has embarked on a three-day journey across the breadth of the country. He is expected to travel for 1,100 kilometers by land, passing through the departments of Potosi, Oruro and Cochabamba before reaching Chimore on November 11th. His return to Chimore will mark his coming back to the place from where he was forced to exile last year. In our next story, prominent Palestinian leftist activist Khitam Safin has been placed under administrative detention on Monday, a week after abduction by Israeli security forces. The administrative detention will last for six months. Safin was arrested on November 2nd along with several other Palestinian activists, trade unionists and former political prisoners in raids across the occupied West Bank. Her arrest last week was condemned by several women's groups and leftist organizations across Palestine and the Arab world. They have demanded that Israeli authorities immediately and unconditionally release her along with other political prisoners. As per reports by human rights groups, there are over 5,700 Palestinians in Israeli prisons. Of these, over 470 are administrative detainees of whom four are women. We now go to the Nagorno-Karabakh region where Armenia and Azerbaijan have announced an agreement to end the conflict. The agreement is mediated by Russia. It will be effective from midnight on Tuesday. Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, Pashinyan announced the agreement which was later confirmed by Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev. As per the deal, Armenia will withdraw its forces from Azerbaijani territories including from Nagorno-Karabakh region. These forces have been deployed since 1991. Russian forces will instead be deployed to maintain the peace between the two countries. In a social media post, Pashnyan called the peace agreement unspeakably painful both for him and for the Armenian people. Aliyev, on the other hand, called the agreement a glorious victory in a series of tweets. The announcement of the peace deal was celebrated in Baku. However, in Armenia, the people took to the streets in the capital demanding Pashnyan's resignation. Nagorno-Karabakh is an Armenian majority territory caught in a dispute between Azerbaijan and Armenia. The region had announced its independence as the Republic of Artsakh from Azerbaijan in 1991 with the support of the Armenian military. After years of war between these two countries, a ceasefire agreement was signed in 1994 which too failed to bring peace to the region. The current round of conflict started in September and has killed over 1,000 people on both sides including a large number of civilians. And finally, 
British Prime Minister Boris Johnson suffered a major defeat in the House of Lords on Monday. The Upper House of Parliament voted down several contentious clauses of his internal market bill, which is promoted by the government. The inter this intended to breach the several protocol established under the withdrawal agreement signed with the European Union in January, which would have enabled Brexit. The vote comes at a time when the Johnson government is engaged in a crucial round of negotiations with the EU. These negotiations are for a free trade agreement. Despite the defeat, the government is expected to continue to push for the struck-down clauses in later legislative stages of the bill. While the House of Lords is dominated by the opposition and several independents, the government holds a majority in the House of Commons, which can override the House of Lords. The internal market bill, if passed, would render several clauses and protocols in the existing Brexit bill related to Northern Ireland and Ireland ineffective. The government defended the bill as a backup legislation in case the negotiation with the EU does not bear any fruit. As for the withdrawal agreement, the UK and Northern Ireland are said to be considered as a single entity in future trade negotiations, but Northern Ireland must have a separate set of regulations on goods and services. This has to be in line with the EU single market. This places the effective EU-UK trade border between Great Britain and the island of Ireland. However, Boris Johnson's bill would have removed the special privileges given to Northern Ireland. The opposition has called the government's proposed bill an attempt to hasten a hard border between the two Irish sides. Many have expressed the fear that the move can undo the peace maintained in the region by the Good Friday Agreement. Even the Irish government has condemned the attempt to breach the Brexit Treaty. The British government and the EU leadership are currently holding negotiations in London over a future trade deal. The exit agreement binds the UK to EU laws on various aspects on trade, competition and rights over the shared maritime space until the end of the year. Even though there is less than two months to go, the negotiations have reached nowhere close to conclusion. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.